Hi everyone, my name is Sarah and Shane. I am on the Customer Acceleration Team, also known as CAT, for the Data Loss Prevention and Information Protection Teams, of course, under Microsoft Purview. Today, I am going to walk you through a use case where we have a custom information type and, that we've created and how we can use that to create a few data loss prevention policies. So I'll show you a live demo of what it looks like in Exchange Online, uh, within Teams, within SharePoint, and OneDrive as well. So please bear with me and um, let's hope that our demo does work today. So with that being said, we are currently on our Microsoft Purview Compliance Portal. Within this portal, the first thing that we are going to do is kind of go through the steps or what it looks like to have a um, custom information, uh, custom sensitive information type, right? So on the left, we're going to jump on to the data classification here. You'll see that we have quite a few different openings here, and then we'll click on sensitive info types and then I've already created the custom information type for this uh, demo, but what you'll do is you'll actually go through the process of creating, excuse me, creating sensitive information type here and walk through that process overall. So my custom information type that I've already included is actually under my name and it's called this very long name and I'm not sure why I use that. And we're going to jump into the Sarazen MIP test user one info type here and uh, jump into edit so I can show you a little bit more so as to what that looks like, right? So when I go through, of course, you have the, the name of it, you move forward and you create the different patterns. In my case, what I did was I created a keyword list and chose that it would be available anywhere in the document, right? Within that keyword list, I jump on over and I am looking at these, these words here. It's in it's case insensitive, so they could be lowercase, it could be capital, it doesn't really matter. As long as this is available, we will be able to go through and actually identify that information type. So I'm going to cancel out of that. And then you can go through the process and choose a confidence label and of course save the info type. So this is the custom information type that we are working with right now. This also can be the custom SIT, the custom sensitive information type, or sometimes you even hear people say custom info type. But in this case, custom SIT, sensitive information type, they're basically all referring to the same thing here for the sensitive information types. Now that we have this created, let's go on into our data loss prevention side and actually look at creating a policy, right? So we are in the data loss prevention component within the Microsoft Purview Compliance Portal that can be found on the bottom left here under Solutions. We're going to jump into Policies, and I already do have a policy created for this, so we're going to take a look at just what that looks like overall the, and um, just walk through those configurations, right? So for this policy, I do have it set up for Exchange, email, your SharePoint sites, OneDrive, and of course a Teams chat as well. These are the four different locations I have selected and I have gone through and selected my test account here uh, to be the main source for the Exchange, my, my own SharePoint site, my own OneDrive site, and the, or OneDrive account, and then of course just overall Teams, right? So all four of these are now associated with me. And I'm going to now move to the next step, which is to create the rules as to what is going to actually be detected or done, right? So what I'm now looking for is the anytime a content is shared outside of Microsoft 365 and um, contains the custom information type, this custom sensitive information type that we just created, then we go, go ahead and we block people outside of our organization, right? So with that, we do uh, do user notifications and uh, within the user notification, we do things like policy tips depending on where you are, as well as uh, doing some context in our email notification to the customer as well, or the user as well, right? So you can see I have stairs and tests located here, and this is what's going to be part of this overall DLP policy. 
So with that, I'm going to move forward. I've already tested it out and reviewed it. And so right now it is already turned on in my environment. And then we can go through and submit. I'm not going to do any of that as it's already done. I just want to show you some of the configurations and then we can move forward to the next step, which is going into our actual different the four locations that we had configured to show you what that looks like. Right. So I am right now in my my Outlook account, right? I want to create a new email right now with the keywords that we had included earlier. Let's give it a subject. Let's do something weird. And then let's put a random email address here. That's clearly an external email address. And then just tab on over here. And as you can see, automatically we see the policy tip that I created earlier, Sarah's in test. Can show the details. This, this recipient isn't authorized to receive this type of information, as well as they are outside of our organization. Now we can go ahead and try to click send, but then you'll see that the send is being blocked, and that's because it contains that sensitive information and it's being sent to a third party or external user in this case. This is the overall behavior for Exchange. Now we're going to jump on into Teams and do the exact same thing here. Let's put in the, the, the key terms. As you can see, I was testing this out earlier and you know they went ahead and they were being blocked. So we're hoping that the same thing happens when I send this over to, and as you can see, it was, the message was blocked here and it's being sent to a third party email here. And then once we jump over into SharePoint, let's, we're in the SharePoint site, Let's create a new Word document for this matter. And um, let's do, in this case, same thing. Let's put in the key terms. Let's name this one. What do you want to name this one? Let's name this Sarazen Docs. That is now being saved. And we can try to share this. Let's share that with just random letters here at gmail.com and uh, click it. Then um, this link won't work for anybody outside of our organization. It already pops up here. So that's pretty good. Now let's do um, any anything else like specific and apply that here. So now we have that going over here and let's do send and it'll say send mail. And while that goes through, You'll see that we'll receive an email shortly that it was blocked. Um, while we wait for that, we're going to jump on over into our OneDrive. And within OneDrive, we have a document here that has the, the four terms here as well. And when we go to do the exact same thing, which is share, put random, random letters here and do gmail.com. And we click this and we send this as well. It, we're going to do the exact same thing, which is now we're going to wait to go back into our exchange here and see if that message was blocked. So the first case here, when we did go to try to send it uh, with an Outlook that was blocked, we also went and we tried to do it within the um, SharePoint as well, and it was also blocked too. So we received the emails that they were both blocked when we tried to share it via SharePoint and also for OneDrive. So this is the overall behavior of how it works when you're doing the day loss prevention with the customer information type. It does block it, and you are able to prevent that data from being um, in if, entering the wrong hands for that matter. And so just a couple of different ways that it could work in our overall environment. And really, I'm hoping that this is useful to give you an understanding of how that works in at least those four environments as well. And then next, I'll be showing you in a different way of how this behavior is within um, Endpoint DLP. So that being said, I hope that this is very helpful. And um, yep, we'll catch you very soon. Thank you.